Kyle, thank you. We're following up this morning on that fatal home explosion that happened in Maryville on Thursday. New information has been revealed. An older husband and wife were inside the house on Old White Mill Road when it was blown apart, leaving nothing standing, not even a wall there. Authorities aren't releasing the victims' names just yet, but neighbors say the two were well known in the community and core members of Faith Promise Church. The road in front of their home still closed as investigators look for clues amid widely scattered debris. Atmos Energy says gas lines are in blocks surrounding that home, but it is too early to know if those lines had anything to do with the deadly explosion. Authorities say autopsies are planned for later today. The Bunn County Sheriff's Office says they took in five people who crashed this stolen car yesterday. You can see it on your screen right there. According to deputies, the driver of the car crashed into a utility pole on Ridgeway Trail, and all five people then took off on foot. Four people were tracked down about a half mile away from the crash. A fifth was found hiding in a ditch. Well, how credible is a key witness in the Holly Bobo murder trial? Jason Autry was given immunity to testify against the alleged killer, Zach Adams. But some say it will be easy to prove that he's lying. Autry did an interview from prison three years ago, and what he said then could be different from what he's telling prosecutors now. Autry, Zach, and Dylan Adams are charged with the kidnapping, rape, and murder of Holly Bobo. If convicted, all three could face the death penalty. Zach Adams will start his trial in September. The former Tennessee teacher accused of kidnapping his teenage student has a new trial date. Tad Cummins was supposed to go to trial in July, but it's been pushed back to January now. Public defenders want more time to research that case. Cummins already pleaded not guilty to a federal charge of taking a minor across state lines for sex. Hackers targeted a Tennessee government site and they were able to get in. This all happened yesterday morning. The website of the Tennessee Comptroller's office was hacked and a message posted by a group claiming to be the Moroccan Islamic Union mail. The message was up for about half an hour. The Comptroller's office is temporarily pulling its website offline, but says luckily personal information was not compromised. ATM skimmers popping up all over the southeast. Identity thieves place devices over the slot where you enter your card, and in a matter of seconds, they can steal your information. But they are also easy to pull off. And get this, police actually encourage people to try to pull on the device before they put their card in. You're not going to damage or destroy. Police say pulling on the card reader should be a part of every person's banking or even gas pumping routine. Before you put in your card, give a good yank on the area immediately around the slot. If there's a skimmer, you should be able to pull it off with just your hands alone. Kids and teachers from Knox County Schools get the day off on August 21st. For what else but to see that solar eclipse? The moon should pass in front of the sun right around 2.30 in the afternoon. And we're supposed to get an extra good view right here in East Tennessee. Students will get solar viewing glasses created by two Knox County students. And teachers will be given lessons about the eclipse before it happens. Stores are already lining their shelves with back to school supplies. Hard to believe that that time of the year is already upon us. Tax free shopping starts July 28th, but if you do want to get a head start, we've got some tips for you. Head over to a consignment shop instead of a retail store. We found out that a lot of times prices can be about a third cheaper at secondhand stores. Some parents we spoke to say it's hard to keep up with kids' clothes, and a whole lot of money goes into it. And the back to school business is a big one. Nationwide, people spend about $10 billion to dress their kids for the school year. Welcome back. Now, they're typically chasing down suspects, and police often have to put themselves in pretty dangerous situations. But on Friday, a Loudoun police officer was on a different mission. He called it a mission of love. Love prevails on Facebook. You gotta love it. Loudoun police officer Scott Newman helped a former Lenore City fireman propose. Now the officer pretended to arrest the man in front of his emotional girlfriend. He then pretended to search the suspect and when he asked if he had anything on his person, that's when the man pulled out the ring and proposed. Of course, she had to say yes. If you want to check out that entire video, you definitely should. It's on our website, local8now.com. Coming up in just a little under three minutes on Local 8 News, the Russian controversy continues for both the president and his eldest son. Stick with us for more.